with Cambly, you can literally log on at any time of day and make good money. Hey expats and travelers, I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And we've been living abroad for over 11 years now and loving it. If you're interested in ditching your average life in your home country and exploring the world in a way that won't break the bank, then this is the video for you. We have a list of the top five countries in the world to live on for $1,500 per month or less. We've even included a job recommendation at the end, so you have no excuses to get out there and see more of the world. Are you ready? Let's go. Now all the countries on our list have good internet which is vital for working remotely. You'll also need health insurance for all of them so keep that in mind when you're budgeting. Plus entertainment will vary depending on your lifestyle. Let's get to the breakdown of the costs of our five countries. First country on our list is Ecuador. There are two massive draws to this country. The first one is the diverse typography and vibes. You can choose to live by the beach, be in a city, live near a UNESCO World Heritage Site, or choose a slower paced mountain village. The second is the year-round good weather. Obviously, city and beach living will be a bit pricier, but both are still doable on this $1,500 budget. We will go ahead and give you the pricing for two bedrooms so that you have the option to get a roommate or it gives you an idea of house prices if you still prefer to drop down to one bedroom or get something bigger like a three bedroom. You can get a two bedroom apartment for $500 a month. Utilities will be under $50 but might be higher during the hotter months because you'll be running the air conditioner more. This is the bulk of your monthly budget. You can grab a meal at an inexpensive restaurant for about $5 or even less in some of the smaller villages. But what about groceries? As long as you stick to local items and not a bunch of imports, you can spend under $250. Also shopping at local markets as opposed to grocery stores will help you cut some costs. You shouldn't need a car, so that helps keep the transportation costs down. Taking public transportation will cost you well under $1 for a ride, and you can even hire a driver, and that's quite inexpensive. All in all, Ecuador offers a variety of vibes, great yearly weather, and best of all, an easily doable and comfortable lifestyle for $1,500 per month. The next on our list is Bulgaria. There aren't many capital cities around the world that you can actually live in for $1,500 or less, but Sofia is one of them. One of the cool things is Bulgaria is growing with those working remotely, so to cater to this, there are co-working spaces and communities popping up all over the country. For those of you looking for cooler weather, especially during the winter, Bulgaria could be the place for you. Winter and snow sports are popular here, and some great places to ski and snowboard aren't too far from the capital. Now when we say you can live in Bulgaria for $1,500 a month, you can definitely do it for that amount, but if you want to do it for even less, that's actually possible here. You can really tighten your budget and live for around $1,000 a month if you want to. Again, this isn't super common, especially living in a city as opposed to a rural village. A two bedroom apartment in the capital city can be as little as $400 per month, and sometimes this can even include utilities. If utilities aren't included, you can expect to pay around $75, give or take, depending on your heating and cooling usage. The local traditional food is influenced by Greek, Turkish, and Arabic. It's quite natural and fresh as well. So shop at these outdoor markets and you'll find some great seasonal foods for very affordable prices. You can grab a meal at an inexpensive restaurant for around seven to $10, but if you wanna go a little fancier, you won't be breaking the bank either. It will still only cost you around 20 to $25. However, if you choose to stay on the cheaper side of things, it will keep your costs down and help you hit closer to that 1,000 a month mark. Your grocery budget will depend largely on where you shop and what kinds of food you eat. Go seasonal and you'll save a lot. It's doable to stay around $300 per month for groceries, but it just depends on where you're buying and what you're buying. You can get around on public transportation for around $1. Lastly, Bulgaria is in a great location for traveling to a variety of different countries. So if you wanna stretch that budget a little bit, then we recommend spending that money on travel. All right, let's head over to Asia for the third country on our list, which is Vietnam. Asia has a few good options. But for overall living, internet, the people, and the views, and a few other things, Vietnam is a great place to live for $1,500 a month. Vietnam offers beautiful, smaller cities that we would highly recommend you to explore. Getting outside of the bigger cities here will help you stretch your budget. One whole side of Vietnam is along the water, so if you want to be near water, this is a great option for you. Lots of little rivers run through the country too, so being inland is okay, you'll be closer to greenery, but you still get water as well. You can rent a two bedroom apartment for around 350, depending on where it's located and what amenities you have. If you choose to live in a bigger city, such as Ho Chi Minh, you're going to pay close 
closer to 700 so you can see the prices will depend and vary a lot depending on what city you're in. Utilities are on the inexpensive side and will cost you around $50 a month. But remember, Vietnam is tropical and that means lots of sun, monsoon season. This could dictate your utility usage. Vietnam is full of little outdoor places to grab an inexpensive bowl of noodles or some sort of local food. This will only cost you a couple of dollars. So if you choose to stay local with your eating out, you can get some great and filling meals for two to four dollars. Once you jump into some of the restaurants, and especially those serving more Western type foods, the price will jump up considerably. Grocery stores are stocked well here, but so are the local markets. If you mix it up between the two, you can keep your grocery bill to around $200 per month. Don't forget you need to buy water as well as it's not advisable to drink the tap water in Vietnam. So depending on how much water you drink, you might spend around $10 per month or so on water. Renting a scooter is the way to go here. This will vary depending on your city, but rentals will be around $50 and gas is quite cheap. It's anywhere from $3 to $5 to fill up a tank and that'll last you for quite a while. If you're looking for that tropical destination, Vietnam is for you. Portugal used to be a little hidden gem in Europe and more and more people are discovering this amazing country. It's small but offers a European lifestyle at an affordable price. You can choose to be in the northern part and experience the cooler weather or in the southern part and the sun and the cool waters. We also can't forget to mention that you can choose to live central among the glorious vineyards and the famous Portuguese wine. Unlike some of the others on this list, Portugal offers a great lifestyle for $1,500, but this is definitely outside of the bigger cities. It would be really, really hard to try to live in Lisbon or Porto on $1,500 as a foreigner, but there are a variety of smaller cities that offer a great lifestyle for this amount. Housing will by far take the biggest chunk of your monthly income here as housing prices are getting a little crazy in Portugal as more and more people are finding out what the country has to offer. In a medium sized city, a two bedroom will cost you anywhere from $700 to $900 per month. Utilities are also on the higher end, most likely costing you around $100 per month. Now, you could try to find a roommate to split these housing costs with, but that's a lifestyle choice totally up to you. Portugal offers a variety of food options, and while it might be tempting to get sushi, pizza, or something similar, that cuisine can add up. You can easily find traditional Portuguese food for a super affordable price. The secret is to order the plate of the day, which will give you an abundance of food for anywhere from seven to ten dollars. Oftentimes, this includes your drink too. If you can avoid the touristy areas and find the little mom and pop Portuguese restaurants, then you'll be good to go. Markets are generally in smaller towns and are frequented by locals and tourists. This is where you want to go for your fresh foods. Grocery stores are also reasonably priced as well. It's possible to spend around $300 a month on groceries. Transportation will depend on what the city has to offer, but most likely it'll at least have a bus, which will be around $2 for a single ride. Now notice that we are quickly approaching that $1,500 threshold in Portugal, and this is for a medium sized city. So keep that in mind that $1,500 is doable, but you'll need to be smart about how you budget. Last on the list is Mexico. Mexico has long been talked about as a great place to move to, and there's a reason why. We recommend getting off of the mini resorts though and finding smaller pockets in Mexico that are affordable and fit your lifestyle. The great thing is that the topography of Mexico can cater to lots of different vibes. So explore a beach town or live a bit more inland. A two bedroom apartment here is generally negotiable, so keep that tactic in mind. If you want a place with a view, security, and those types of amenities, then the rent might be around $700. There are definitely less expensive options, like around $500. Utilities are affordable between $30 and $40. It's very easy to go crazy on groceries here, as there are a variety of big supermarkets, but remember, the imported goods will get you. You should be able to find those markets that offer fresh foods for a reasonable price. Most cities really have a variety to offer for all price ranges for groceries. But to give you an idea of a mix of markets and some of the imported goods that you might crave, expect to pay around 250 or so for groceries. Skip the tourist areas for eating out and find the mom and pop restaurants for good food at affordable prices. You can get a big plate of food, rice and all, for five to seven dollars. Public transportation is available for around 50 cents for a single ride. You also have the option to rent bicycles where they have the little stations where you unlock and relock them. Now we have given you the five best countries to live in for $1,500 a month. We wanna share a flexible job that you can have that will hit this monthly income and allow you to work from anywhere in the world whenever you want. Now let's hear from someone that has been living abroad while working on Cambly. 
My name is Megan, and I am a teacher on Cambly, and as well, I'm a freelance writer. I have lived in Costa Rica, Nicaragua, England, well, Canada, I'm from here, and Guatemala while working with Cambly. Definitely, uh, 100%. You have complete freedom over your schedule, um, what times you work, when you work. Um, just because you work for the platform doesn't mean that you have to commit to, say, morning schedule or an evening schedule. You completely build your own schedule, um, which is just invaluable while you're traveling. Typically, no. Um, I usually do do a little bit of lesson planning before my day starts, um, just because I only teach a solid base of regulars now, and we have a specific curriculum that we're working on. But when you first start on the platform, you don't necessarily have to do that, nor do you have to prep at all. Um, I'm just a little bit of a type A personality, so I like to come prepared and knowing what we're going to study, but it's not expected of you at all. So we're paid weekly on Mondays. Um, you're paid 10, 20 USD an hour, and it's great, um, especially while traveling. You know, you can count on a weekly paycheck, and they pay you through PayPal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. it's definitely possible. Um, of course, it takes some time. Um, when you first sign up for Cambly and your profile first goes live, you're considered new talent, and which is attracting to a lot of students. They like speaking to someone who's brand new on the platform. It makes them excited because someone else is also new, um, you know, cause, because they're new to the platform. For me, I started out working about 25 hours a week on Cambly, um, and it took me about two months to get a really good schedule with really good regulars. No, it's actually the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, um, because when I had signed up, one of my friends referred me to Cambly and said, you know, this is a really great thing. I think you could really benefit from it. So I looked it up, watched some YouTube videos of tutors who already work on Cambly just to see if it was a good fit. And I went through the onboarding process and essentially you just send in your information, you know, your PayPal email that they would use to then pay you with weekly. And you record a short video, which is both your introduction video that the students will see before they book a class with you. But also it's sort of like an interview. Well, it's really given me the freedom. Um, one thing that immediately intrigued me about the platform is that you can build your own schedule entirely. So because Cambly's student base um, consists of students from all over the world, it means that you have work any time of day, 24-7, um, essentially. I think, to me, it means taking charge of your life. Doing something different than the status quo. It's just enabled me to live this unique life that I never thought was possible before I discovered like the digital nomad lifestyle. I always knew that I didn't really want to work for someone else. I always wanted to be my own boss in some shape or form. You know, I never thought it would be possible, but here I am. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, at Expats yeah. Everywhere, we believe that living abroad transforms lives. How has living abroad transformed your life? It's really transformed my life. Um, I grew up in a really small province and on the east coast of Canada called Newfoundland. And in Newfoundland, I wasn't really exposed to different cultures um, growing up. No fault to Newfoundland, but you know, we're all of Irish descent mostly. I never really knew much about other cultures. So when I you know, discovered the digital nomad lifestyle, it transformed my life because it opened me up to different cultures and different people and just getting to know how other people live. And at first it was definitely a culture shock for me. Before I started working with Cambly, I spent some time in Thailand. That really opened my eyes. It also made me feel very privileged um, because a lot of a lot of people in other countries don't have the means to do what what I do for a living and it's really just made me humble and made me really appreciate everything that I have I, I think I look at life much differently than I did before if you're interested in learning more about Cambly click the link in the description section below and if you want to know more about the five countries that we've discussed here we've created a playlist just for you right here now let's get moving <laughs>